we are live. Scary. <laughs> Hello, Richard. It's your turn. Hello. Are we? Uh, do you want me to start with something, or? Yes, please. All right. Well, this is the uh, second day uh, hangout, uh, concurrent with the morning sessions at ISAW 4 in Mountain View, California, going on now, just beginning now. And uh, we had a good, uh, slightly over almost an hour and a half session yesterday. And we have uh, 45 minutes to an hour today. And we may have some more people joining us, but right now, uh, on the Hangout, we have Daniela de Paulus in Rotterdam. We have Kerry Doyle in El Paso, Texas. Uh, wave to the camera, Kerry. So there we are. Uh, Lowry Burgess at the conference itself uh, in Mountain View at Ames Research uh, Facilities and uh, at, at uh, Taksha University campus there. Um, Richard Klar in uh, Paris, where it's uh, drizzling, and uh, I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Rob uh, Lafrenet in, from in London. London. Yeah. Uh, Rob is with Arts Catalyst, as we can see. So uh, a great little group. We expect uh, hopefully a few more people to join us. Um, We'll start maybe with some brief, uh, I'll let Daniela maybe uh, sort of introduce people to, uh, ask them to introduce themselves and maybe, uh, I guess we'll start, Lowry only has a little time, is that right, Lowry? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to be in and out, so. Uh. All right, so why don't we start with Lowry just as, as you did yesterday, since you're at the, at the program itself. Give a little intro on one, and you're one of the main organizers. Why don't you give a little introduction to what we're doing at ISAW 4, what the purpose is, and uh, what what we want to get out of all of this, and that may also steer the uh, hangout conversations a bit to be uh, relevant to the larger conference. Well, uh, the the central purpose for this gathering, I think, is that um, from my point of view, is to you know, the big thing is to further the space art community in every way we can, and particularly how do we move uh, uh, the arts and culture into uh, more mainstream participation discussion in the general space world. So that's our, um, you know, the big, the big goal, and specifically here we have these uh, workshop pods uh, to focus at specific kinds of problems, and one in particular is we have been offered to be brought into the mainstream of the big conference, the big ISDC, the NSS conference, uh, next year in LA. So the arts uh, have been, you know, asked to become much more mainstream in that whole uh, very, very spacey conference. And I don't know how many of you have been there or not, but it's a really big um, uh, space conference with, uh, you know, everybody's there from NASA to the astronauts and, and the entrepreneurs and everybody else. So I've been wanting to get use that as a, a venue so that we can bring general cultural issues about space forward, and inside that, the notion of you know what, the role that arts will play in in, in future of space on Earth and out there. So that's a general mission we're I think we're about is how do we move our whole community ahead? How do we address very specific problems and opportunities, and at the same time, how do we you know. Uh, get a sense of a more general framework of how how the whole community is moving. So that's the the goal here, and I hope that those are issues that are uh, germane to everybody there. I I know <laughs> they're very important. And uh, so, if you have any other specific questions, I'd be happy to answer. But we've been having presentations and seeing new work and new people, which is very exciting. We've got a whole bunch of young people here under. Uh, you know, 25 and under, who are space artists and space interested people. So that's exciting because we have about four decades worth of, uh, you know, activists in the ensemble here. So we have the old folks and middle and, and the younger people. So that's very exciting to see a lot of new young folks and new faces that way. 
and also for me to meet older artists that I haven't met before who are doing their presentations here. So as I said, we have all the presentations going on and then, uh, then these workshop pods that we're going to be working this afternoon to work on these questions. Great, thank you. And I see we, uh, and we may take a, just a moment quickly to work out technical matters with Dimitris Kranyu, who's online with us. Oh, can Dimitris. You, can you hear uh, us? Sorry, Richard, just a quick update. Um, Roger Molina cannot make it. I have just received a mail from uh, Roger. And uh, Dan Goods is trying to join the Hangout, so uh, he, will, he will be with us shortly. And, and uh, welcome, we're, Dimitri. We're also waiting for Sarah Jane Pell, I believe. Yes, no yeah. news from her yet. So she might be, uh, it's very late in Australia, so uh, we hope she can make it. Richard, Richard yes. Flowery, I'd like to introduce Dimitris to all of you, in front of you. Uh, you probably don't know him yet and if you don't you as soon as this is over you'll want to know him he's a he's a colleague and in, uh, in Pittsburgh who is a, the a really foremost uh, space economist and he he's studies and teaches and runs a program dealing with exonom what he his term called exonomics and it's the most fascinating things and Dimit he's a just a gold mine of knowledge about policy law economics relative to space and uh, so we often interact with each other and he comes to my classes and I just was at a lecture at Point State Park with him so uh, I just wanted to give an introduction because he's a, a you know a very unique part of our uh, our world which is the whole ex exonomics of what we are looking at in terms of the development of space and uh, Dimitris is your audio on? I don't think so. Yeah. Can okay, you uh, can you hear us, Dimitris? Okay, Richard is back. Uh, okay, looks like Dimitris is not um, uh, connected uh, with the audio. So, uh, Dimitris, if you can please say um, a warrant to us, it, we can figure out if you are actually able to hear us. Wave your hand if you can hear us. Doesn't look like you can hear us. <laughs> okay. Um, Richard, I would suggest to uh, continue with the introduction that we started yesterday. It was great to get to know all the guests of these uh, Hangouts. Uh, they're from all around the world. So. Um, I uh, would suggest to start again uh, with uh, Rob. Hi, oh, Rob. Hello. Welcome back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us for the second hangout. Yeah, that's great. Uh, one moment. Am I am I on? Yeah. You are Can on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. okay, um, sorry, you'll have to start with someone else. But someone's just coming into my space. Just one oh. moment. Oh. Okay. Well, Richard, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself as we haven't really mentioned your work yesterday. We, uh, which Richard? You are Richard Lauenberg, yourself. Uh, 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 actually, uh, let's, let's skip me for now. I'm going to step away for a minute and uh, do a private call to Dimitris to talk him through things. I'll mute myself while the rest of you begin. So why don't you talk to Richard Clark maybe or or uh, to carry or others, and I'll be back yes, I'm ready when you, if you want me now. I just have to press a button. Okay, so uh, I'll go back to Rob Lafrené. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm the curator of the Arts Catalyst, and um, we've been around this sort of uh, space and the arts um, environment for I suppose about 15 years now. We started working with Kitsu Dubois and we organized some microgravity flights in Star City in the early 2000s. And um, as you probably know, the Arts Catalyst uh, specializes in collaborations between 
art and science. And obviously the space environment is one of those places which really stimulate those kind of collaborations. Um, as a result of um, our work um, in zero gravity with, um, in, in Russia, we, we got together with something called the Mir Consortium. It's a pity Anik and Roger aren't here now because that was set up with um, Leonardo Olatz and um, also Project Atoll from Slovenia, which is Marco Pelka, who's just down the road there in uh, Santa Barbara. And um, we, uh, we, we started off, um, in the end, we flew about 50 different artists and projects in Russia. And as a result of that, us and um, Leonardo Olatz uh, competed to uh, um, get a contract with the European Space Agency to advise on cultural utilization of the space station. And we organized some events at ESTEC, and we produced a very thick report. And um, as always, we we're now waiting for the space agency to do something with it. But it was a stimulating exercise. Um, we also had online yesterday now much our associate curator um, is based in Mexico City and we started a regular event which has become very successful um, called Cosmica which has been happening both in London had just happened in Paris during the spring meeting and um, has now become the Cosmica Festival in Me Mexico um, City and it's quite interesting because there are a lot of um, Developments coming Cut me out, out again. We're having trouble space connecting with the plug in. Please follow our troubleshooting steps. Okay. Yeah, I'll just continue. That was a piece of uh, technical advice there. Um, yeah, the Mexican Space said, Collective, and um, there's now going to be a microgravity initiative from the uh, via the Mexican Space Agency, and we're kind of connected with that. So we'll be having another Cosmica in August of, 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 of this year. But I also, um, I, I actually invited Kerry Doyle um, here, who's here today, who's, um, who um, came to the Free Enterprise Show. I think you, some of you saw Tyler Starlings yesterday, and I think Tyler may be there. And Kerry is going to talk, I think, a little bit about uh, something we're cooking up uh, between the Arts Catalyst and the University of Texas El Paso. Uh, trying to uh, deal with this issue of um, space agencies being um, being concentrated in the larger industrial countries, and um, I, the, this new project is about space agencies in um, Latin America and um, called Art and Space in the Americas. So I won't. Uh, I think Kerry is going to say something about that. Uh, um, and so anyway. This is us in the world of space exploration. Um, I think, yeah, I think a lot of really interesting projects are happening. We had also yesterday Julian Priest, who was in our office recently, who uh, was showing his micro satellite, which is going to be flying around in low Earth orbit, along with 200 other, a little swarm of 200 micro satellites that are just simply going to be there for three weeks before they burn up. He was just sitting here where I am on the sofa. Um, only uh, three days ago. So it feels like another one of those moments where things are really happening in art, in space and the arts. And I hope you all agree over there in, um, in, in California. So that's enough from me. Thanks a lot. It's great to be in this hangout. Thanks, Rob. I will move on to Richard, uh, Richard Clark. Richard, uh, would you Hello. like to talk about your work uh, sure of course or whatever uh, is interesting to you regarding space yes art. Oh, okay well I think uh, just about everyone on the panel knows me so I'll be speaking more to the people who are watching who don't know me or to future viewers of this um, panel discussion but um, my background I'm originally from uh, Los Angeles California and uh, I've been involved with uh, space art since 1982. I was the uh, third artist to obtain a reservation on the space shuttle to fly an art payload, Spaceflight Dolphin, which was a uh, SETI experiment, which is how I justified it to NASA in terms of a human technical benefit. And since that time, I've developed a number of concepts having to do with using 
space technology and space data to um, create art. And I've also been involved with the International Academy of Astronautics since 1995. In uh, 2002, I was elected as a corresponding member. In 2007, I was elected a full member into the International Academy. And I've been working on organizing uh, sessions at the International Astronautical Congress. We have one coming up uh, this end of September, beginning of October in Beijing. I uh, put together a session called Space as an Artistic Medium. And we'll be doing another session with uh, the same general theme for Toronto in 2014. So I hope that some of the people that are watching this and some of the other space artists that have things that they're developing will consider uh, presenting a paper. It's too late for Beijing, but there's plenty of time to submit something for uh, Vancouver. So I'm very excited to see all this activity in space art. And when I first started, uh, I think you could safely say that you could count on both hands the number of people in the world who were involved in space art. And now it's probably a fairly large number. And we're seeing uh, a lot of young people involved with some very new and exciting ideas. So I'm, I'm very happy to see all of this bearing fruit, and uh, I look forward to some exciting times ahead. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Richard. You're welcome. Um, Kerry, we leave the floor to you. Uh, is your microphone working? Yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm Kerry Doyle, and I'm the director of the uh, Rubin Center for the Visual Arts at the University of Texas at El Paso. Um, we're here about a, um, an eighth of a mile from the U.S.-Mexican border, and um, a lot of my professional work takes place in Juarez, Mexico, as well. And as Rob mentioned, um, I'm very new to art and space, but, um, but we're collaborating on a project for 2015, um, also with uh, the participation of Roger Molina and uh, Laboratorio Arte Alameda in Mexico City, that deals with um, uh, Latin American artists who are engaged with, uh, with issues of space. And, and for me, that came about naturally. I was connected to a lot of the artists who are in the uh, Mexican Space Collective that Rob mentioned. But in some of the larger shows that have surveyed art and space, um, there's been, you would possibly know Latin Americans, if, if I remember correctly, um, represented in, in a lot of those major shows. And, and I started, um, as I was looking at production in Latin America in relation to art, in space, um, started to ask the question about um, how uh, the imaginary of space functioned in, in countries outside of Europe and the United States, and um, and then to look a little bit at uh, the relationship of um, space agencies uh, outside again of Europe and the United States and, and their goals and their role um, and the way that artists were responding to them. Uh, we've started to find a really rich uh, body of work and uh, are beginning to work on both an exhibition and a, and a series of commissions. So. Uh, so that's why I'm part of this conversation today. Excellent. Okay, thanks, Kerry. Um, we uh, now move on to Dimitris uh, Kanyu. Hi, Dimitris. Welcome to this hangout. Now, we it we seems have problems. it seems he's hearing us now. And if he unmutes his microphone, let's try that once more, Dimitris. Can you hear us? Wave if you hear us. Yes, good. Good. And uh, now speak or... Uh, for some reason, we're not getting audio from Dimitris. If you see the... Microphone icon on the top uh, right hand side, red. It means you are muted. So, if you can, if you if it's red, you need to unmute yourself. Otherwise, it's uh, some other problem that we might not be able to fix. Hmm. Yeah, we're not hearing you. No. Okay. Well, uh, we'll keep trying, and maybe later on will be able to talk to Dimitris, uh, but it's good that you are able to listen to what we are sharing in this platform. So the um, uh, 
Richard. Yes. The topic of the conference are uh, very broad. I was talking earlier with uh, Lowry about the topics that will be discussed later at the conference in Mountain View. One of the topics is the um, uh, f how to finance these our projects, so economics and space, and also the future of space arts. Um, so it's, uh, we, are, we hope to, to get some updates from the conference on these topics. What do you think uh, would be relevant to this cast today? Well, I, I, I stepped out briefly, but uh, oops. Rob did something there. Um, there we go. Um, Let's see, at the end of yesterday's discussion, uh, we started to talk about something that may be worth uh, triggering conversation today as well, and that is um, some of the, you know, uh, I think you, Daniela, brought up um, the issue of uh, the approach that's been most common in so-called space arts has been one of sort of rah-rah space yeah. and... Uh, um, you know, sort of putting a smiley face on our interactions with uh, space agencies, especially government agencies, and yet uh, many of us in, in the arts and, and more generally as, as human beings uh, have deep concerns about our society, about space programs. We're looking at this issue, space, uh, and our involvement therein as we look at other things with a bit more of a critical uh, mind. Uh, as, as well as uh, concern about ethical issues and uh, a, a, d a deeper intelligence and, and creative intelligence about our approach to some of these, uh, the issues we face. And that sometimes poses difficulties if we're actually trying to work with the space agencies um, and, and trying to find funding. Uh, it's very difficult to say we want to be a bit critical of things and also want to want to be uh, you know providing good PR so um, you know maybe that's a kickoff point for some discussions I know Carrie just uh, bringing up the issue of um, the uh, those in Mexico who are now uh, more and more involved in in these activities ha have been left out so far of most discussions as are peoples in many other locales around the world other than uh, the Russian states, the former Soviet space agency, Japan, Europe, and the U.S. So uh, maybe let's just touch on some of those issues. Um, anybody? Richard Clark, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Uh, well, or not? <laughs> I'll speak, but after somebody else speaks, I mean, if that's okay. All right. I like what? to add. Uh, can I just add something to to, to what you said, uh, Richard? Um, uh, that we discussed also earlier today. Uh, it's not only about the critical attitude about uh, generally what's going on in society, which uh, I think uh, artists uh, are the sometimes the people who are more active in this critical. Um, analysis of uh, any um, aspect of society, so including space, of course. So it's not so much only about that, but it's about um, really having an equal um, collaboration with the scientists and um, uh, the specialists in the space sector. So um, uh, the, the reason why we were discussing this um, need for a deeper understanding of what artists do uh, from the space agency is because sometimes uh, there is a problem maybe in addressing topics that are not um, at first uh, obvious uh, or obviously related to the outreach um, activities of these space agencies. Yeah. I, 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 might, I, I might just add, uh, and, and then quickly go to Kerry, but um, I, I didn't speak earlier. My own work with um, NASA um, in the 19, actually in the 1970s, grew out of uh, what I'm still involved in, and that is more broadly art science collaborations 
um, not so much. My own interest is not particularly space art, uh, other than uh, how that is, fits within a larger context of how we know ourselves and our world and where we're going and the issues we face. Um, in, in working closely with NASA in the 1970s, that involved work uh, with biomedical uh, systems, uh, monitoring human physiology, um, and uh, we, we were involved in early uh, satellite telecommunications projects, sort of uh, pre, much pre-internet. Uh, uh, you know, a number of artists, uh, Kit Galloway, Sherry Rabinowitz, who unfortunately just passed away last month, uh, and, and others doing early satellite telecom projects with the help of NASA and, and external funders. Uh, and, uh, and eventually uh, I and others participated in uh, gravitational simulation experiments that really were not focused so much on, oh, let's play in zero G, but they were more focused on um, what happens to the human body and to the human mind, uh, what happens to living things in space in various uh, on different planets, different gravitational situations, what's going on in the inner ear, the otolith issue, um, blood flow, digestion, uh, Sorry, many other doing? things. Uh, Rob, can you oh, mute yourself? Anyway, though, you know that was uh, actually the context. So it was really based on the yeah. science and research with creative people hopefully offering something to that equation in terms of the over what everybody is learning about these things and for us it was it was a very productive exchange over an early 10 year period uh, uh, early 70s to early 80s that was my primary involvement um i would kind of go in a slightly different direction but you know um to think about you know, Richard is talking about space exploration as a scientific endeavor, which it obviously is, but it's also always been a, a political and a social endeavor. And I think from, from early times, you know, that that the space uh, exploration and the space agencies and our advances have been used as a way to sort of prove our power and kind of prove our um, modernism. And, and from the earliest times, there's also been a, a social response to that. And, I, you know, I was thinking to that uh, poem by Gil Scott Heron, Whitey on the Moon, which maybe you guys know from um, from the 1960s, but um, a strong, powerful like uh, a performance of a of a poem, sort of questioning uh, what it means to to be moving in that direction when you know when there's still all this social and political unrest and you know people that aren't being fed. And um, in Latin America, it it also uh, goes right to the heart of this kind of debate that's part of society of this kind of um, two faces of Latin America, sort of like the modern Latin America that's you know participating at you know. At politically and economically on a global scale, and then what's happening in the underbelly of that. And, and what I'm seeing from a lot of the Latin American artists is that they're interested in kind of um, getting to the heart of um, those questions, even while they're embracing and playing with and learning about the technologies and, and the science behind space exploration. So um, that that's something that uh, that I think is is fertile ground, sort of like uh, critical responses by artists, uh, both to to space exploration itself and in, in, in the military aspects of that, but also just kind of to this imaginary of, of space exploration um, being equal to power or modernism. May I say something? Please. Yes, okay. Uh, well, sort of uh, addressing your question you asked earlier about engaging people from developing countries in access to space and space art. Uh, that's, I think it, it's it's difficult. It, it's, it's difficult for us in the developed countries to access space. And I would say, from my own experience, it was actually easier, I think, to some degree back in the 80s and maybe even the early 90s than it is now. I think where hope lies, it's, it's in the new private companies that are developing to access space. And I think that's where we will have more of an opportunity to be able to access it, certainly low Earth orbit. Uh, but I know that uh, the Getaway Special Program, which was NASA's program, was an absolutely incredible program. It was a way that anyone in the world, it was open to anyone, any country, 
the uh, main criteria was it had to be for human or technical benefit. You couldn't fly art just for art's sake, but you could have a basic uh, five cubic foot canister for ten thousand dollars, and then there were accessories such a as a motorized door assembly, ejection mechanism, but it it was a, a means of accessing space for relatively uh, little money, whereas now the rate is still, I think, what is it, $15,000 a, a pound or a kilo to access space. And the whole idea with these private companies, such as SpaceX, was that uh, the, the hope was that they would get the cost of launching down to around $1,000 a pound. And when those launch costs uh, become accessible to the average person, then I think we'll see a lot more activity. But in answer to your question, how do you engage third, the uh, developing countries, uh, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I guess the first thing is to begin with dialogue and to generate uh, an interest in space. And when I say that interest in space, I'm talking about in terms of the arts and to get people from these countries more involved. I think we're certainly seeing that with Mexico and hopefully we'll see other, you know, developing countries engaged too. I think there is an existing interest in in, in Mexico, in Colombia, Argentina, Brazil, there, there are centers, um, you know, I think that uh, art centers that are dealing with art and science and, and centers that are also you know, producing artists that are dealing with space. And I think Argentina has a history back from the 1960s where um, Guillermo Cosiche wrote uh, the manifesto called Hydro Spatial, Hydro Spatial Cities, how you'd say it, I think, in English, but, um, but that was really talking about sort of an artist's relationship to space. And, um, and from that uh, time onwards in, in Argentina, there's been a, a lot of production in relation to that. So I do think that there's some existing interest. It's sort of a different take on things. And they don't have access to, to space itself. They don't have access to some of the technology that um, some North Amer American and European artists working in space have had access to, for sure. I should just mention that on another cultural context, the, the Science Museum in, here in London um, is um, actually working on a very large academic um, exhibition on, on Russian cosmism. And that's for us quite interesting because the Science Museum is, is traditionally um, displayed bits of hardware which is bought, you know, from various agencies, and and actually to to do a major exhibition in a science museum on the philosophy of space travel, um, for me is quite an interesting um, jump. So I think we may be moving into a phase where the philosophy of space travel begins to become people become more aware of that in 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 space agencies, and I, I'd like to hope that with the cultural engagement going on with space agencies, we can start to question the whole of the framework of the decision making that's made about um, space exploration from space law to human factors to all these areas which I think artists have a lot to say and philosophers and thinkers and th this process needs to be opened out because for too long um, Space exploration has been semi-militarized, I think, and I think we need to move to an area where there is um, more cultural and philosophical impact from a civilian point of view. Um, and yeah, I would like to demilitarize space as far as possible. I'm, I, I think that may be an idealistic notion um, compared uh, when you think of the impact the military still has in space, but uh, I, I, I live in hope that there can be a contribution by cultural people to the peaceful uses of space. Yes, I'd like to add also that um, until now many artists have worked with the idea of space um, embedding it into, for example, utopian architecture. Uh, in the 70s also uh, several artists created these um, visionaries, visionary cities, thinking of uh, uh, space exploration and uh, that perhaps indirectly was a way to also question uh, critically the whole idea of um, uh, how society is structured and uh, 
uh, so um, even embracing sometime this utopian uh, idea of space can be somehow um, a critical approach towards uh, some aspects of society. So in a way, uh, I can see why space is often perceived by artists as a very positive uh, scenario. Uh, it's, it certainly has that very um, imaginative and powerful um, and very poetic uh, meaning. So I think it's also interesting to see how artists engage with the aspect, um, with this kind of aspect of, of space exploration. Because I, I would imagine that in, uh, in our contemporary society there is very little uh, area left for uh, this um, utopian scenario. We have somebody joining us uh, at the conference uh, it's, uh, in Mountain View. Do you want to introduce yourself? Can we hear you? Can you hear us? No, we cannot hear you. Can you unmute your microphone at the top of your the right-hand side of your screen? Is this better? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. My, my name is George Singer. Uh, I'm a media artist and I've just given a presentation on a film I did uh, a while ago um, that basically talks about uh, uh, Méliès and the trip to the moon and showing that in juxtaposition to uh, space imagery and creating a sort of a space between what actually happened and what the fantasy of space was uh, in 1902 when that film was made. and trying to get some kind of resonance between what our imaginary world is and still is today in certain ways, maybe not exactly the same one, maybe quite different one, but still our human uh, fantasies about the unknown uh, usually come out in similar ways, and the reality of what we actually have as imagery from space. So this is what I've been talking about during this talk. Unfortunately, I just walked in, so I haven't been following your conversation, and I'm not sure where exactly I fit in. That's right. It's a pleasure to meet you, George. Are there, are there other people in the room with you there right now? I'm alone for the moment. The presentations oh. are going on in the other room, and I think you have access to them if I'm right. No, uh, no, we can't tell what's going on in the other room at all. We feel like we're in a, a kind of slight uh, <laughs> vacuum-like hang out here. We're not quite sure what's how we uh, how we manifest ourselves at that end in Mountain View. Oh, um, actually, Lowry and Ravi uh, indicated that and sent a link to a WebEx uh, uh, web streaming that uh, we could uh, view what's going on in the other sessions uh, during I the think, day. I think that would be a very good idea for you to get because that link will give you the exact presentations as they're going on. If I'm right from what I've been told. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're in a sort of one of those locked room scenarios here. <laughs> locked in cyberspace. Let me out. <laughs> or a par parallel world, perhaps. Um, I like to think that uh, some people in the conference are following what we were doing, um, like yesterday. Uh, they were projecting the hangout in uh, one of the rooms of the conference. So. Yeah. We would like to hear from other artists that uh, participated in the conference. Um, the, the invitation was open to all the artists to come and uh, introduce themselves and uh, present their work, so uh, we would like to hear a little bit more about your work and uh, if, you, if there are other people that you can invite, please do so, because we are uh, trying to create this link with the live conference. Yeah, George, if, uh, if you can, might you be able to go into the other room and see if Ayako Ono or a couple of other people in the, the other session might come over for a few minutes just to uh, join us uh, to say hello in the Hangout and introduce themselves. Does that work? Uh, uh, right now the presentations are going on, but I, I think right now, up until now, people have come in and talked to you, uh, so I imagine that will be pursued throughout the day. Um, I can go and check and see where things are at in the other room and see if there are some people that are available to come and talk to you. That, that would be great because okay. we're, we're only going to be on for another 15 minutes or so, I think. So. Okay, but I do encourage you to go to that link and see what the presentations are and, and follow that. It's quite interesting. Great, thanks. Okay, thanks. thank you. 
I would like to open up a little bit the discussion. Um, if uh, any of you has uh, a topic that I uh, would like to address in this um, 15 minutes left. Um, I, I think one of the uh, good uh, reasons for doing this Hangout is to bring some topics that are not in the agenda of the conference and uh, we are hoping that uh, this will be the start of, um, of uh, new topics that can be added in future uh, ISO conferences and uh, in general uh, discussion in this online platform. Yeah. So I, if, I have a question. Um, Daniela, I would like you to tell us something about your Moon Bounce project. Okay, Rob. Um, yes, I, I can say a little bit about my artistic work, actually. I also, my, uh, the way I um, became interested in uh, space arts is very much through my research in uh, utopian architecture. And, um, and that led me to also researching in um, uh, communities that use um, wireless technologies to uh, collaborate. And, and uh, in this way, I started collaborating with a team of radio amateurs in, um, in the Netherlands. And I developed with them a, a new application of an existing technology, uh, which is called Moonbounce. We uh, developed a new application that also allows to send images to the moon and back, and hopefully in the near future, other visual data like uh, 3D data, uh, videos. So it's uh, not only an interesting uh, technological application that we apply in a live event where also the audience is directly involved by sending us their pictures that we moon bounce for them, but also it's a way to connect people from all around the earth uh, through the ham radio technologies. So during each performance we involve people in different parts of the world that use the moon as a natural satellite in order to exchange uh, this, these images. So it's a very playful and somehow um, again quite a utopian way of uh, uh, looking into uh, wireless technology and uh, space. And this research led me to explore other possibility of communication by the moon. Uh, now I'm working uh, with some neurologists uh, for also moon bounce in brain waves and sending brain waves into outer space. And I'm hoping to collaborate for this project with uh, Nahum Mantra, who is very interested also in in, uh, neurology and uh, uh, in, he has done already some work about um, brain waves. So uh, again, uh, the collaborative aspect for me is very important and um, uh, the, the project I do with Astronomers Without Borders called uh, Space Arts is um, again really about collaborating with people from um, different places uh, and different cultures. So I guess this is really the core of my of my research. And, and Daniela, you're going to try and do a moon bounce in um, in Mexico City this August. Is that right? Yes, Rob. It's right. That's right. Um, the uh, radio telescope uh, where I'm currently artist in residence at the in the north of the Netherlands is uh, still undergoing a long restoration that started last year. It was uh, the very first radio telescope to be built in Europe, so uh, the dish was full of, um, uh, was completely uh, ruined, so it had to go through a very long restoration that is nearly finished. So we are hoping that the performance in August will be the first event uh, that will mark the reopening of the dish. Mm. Can and I ask um, a question to someone in the conference there, based on what Daniel has just said, which is that, um, would you say that everyone there is thinking about issues of exploration, human spaceflight, astronomy, or microgravity? Would you say there's a decent um, distribution of um, interests there in, in the conference that I saw? I Lowry, uh, is your audio 
unmuted? Yeah, Lowry would be a good one to answer that, maybe. Yeah, we can't hear La Lowry. Can you hear us? Can you unmute? The usual. Lowry, the uh, um, microphone icon on the top, right, uh, on the right hand side on the top of your Google Hangout page. That's probably blocked. Yeah, it, it automatically switches off when there's any external noise. And we still don't have Dimitri's uh, audible, do we? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yep, we can hear you. So I'll, I'll try to answer your question. I was just trying to think, given the patterns of everything that we've been hearing, you know, what are the, the you know, the, is there any kind of dominant thing uh, or, you know, pattern among all, all the interests that we have? I think right now it's hard to really say that there's any um, dominant uh, pattern. We have interests in, in almost every level from micro to macro, from radio waves to actuality, uh, particularly physical issues, uh, all of those kinds of things are, are represented, um, you know, so far. So we have a, a at least here there's a, a, a very widespread interest, I think, uh, in terms of um, there's not any kind of dominant theme that I can think of right now in terms of uh, the varieties of art and artistic uh, gestures uh, in and towards space seem to be for me right now very broadly distributed it's very uh, refreshing i think uh to see such a variety of of uh of of uh, activity uh so that's about all i can i say right now i'll, I'll tune in and no doubt later we'll try to figure out what <laughs> everything that's going on uh here but uh, and are I, people excited by the possibility of non space agency um Flights, uh, the possibility yeah, yeah, of sending yeah, objects. Yeah, very interest, uh, big interest in uh, um, you know the the Virgin Galactic and uh, SpaceX uh, possibilities, uh, and so that the whole zero gravity, microgravity, you name it, that whole environment's very well represented here in terms of actual projects and proposals and things like that. So the that's a, a definite interest uh, here. Uh, so, so I wanted to uh, have um, Ayoko Ono, who's here, right? So yeah. you wanted to see her and say hello, so I brought her over, and here she is. <laughs> Move out of the picture. Hello, Ayako. Hello, Ayako. Um, actually, um, I'm trying to integrate art and art artistic projects for future near future space programs including um, Inspiration Mars, which is private company, private NPO's project supported by NASA. And today I will try to um, propose my idea to many artists um, can consider about psychological support for astronauts and integration of art to space. So please uh, think about it and Let's discuss uh, maybe next in the, during the ne next hangout uh, online meeting. Yep. <laughs> well, see you. <laughs> Can you speak briefly about uh, your, your uh, sort of oh. involved in a program here in the U.S. Uh, I, and can you speak a little bit about that? Okay, I'm currently a project intern at National Space Biomedical Research Institute in Houston, and. I, I contacted with the person who is uh, studying about uh, astro uh, astronauts' psychological and physiological health in long-term duration missions, and one, two of them is oh, three or oh, three of them is working with Inspiration Mars project. So I talked um, about the person in charge of the project, and promised to uh, make a pre um, proposal about the integration of art for um, Inspiration Mars, long-term mission. It's, it will be 531 days as minimum, so... Mm. <laughs> and I, I remember uh, I was very impressed with one word 
uh, at the meeting in 2005 uh, yeah. that you were at in a similar location as today. Um, mm -hmm. And you said one of the key words in the Japanese Space Agency program was harmony. Yeah, yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and can you speak a bit about, you know, I, I can't imagine uh, NASA or uh, entities in this country having uh, sort of their mission statement being harmony. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, can you speak a little bit to that point? Yes, um, I have some experience in the confined space in, uh, well, actually at Mars Desert Research Station uh, in, in Utah. Yeah. And artistic activity like uh, music session and watching videos was very helpful for harmonious uh, communication and it's smoothing the um, social activities, social relationships. So, um, and also thinking about music is always thinking about harmony. It's not, if the music is not harmonious, it's not very fun. <laughs> it's not very pleasant. <laughs> so. And that's key to sort of social health and and the health of these kind of programs as well. I yeah, yeah, sense. that's right. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Richard, uh, I'll, it's Lowry again. While I'm here, I I thought it might be good for the whole group to hear. I was on a um, conference call with uh, NASA headquarters about two weeks ago with uh, Bolden and and um, uh, um, Lori and um, two of the other top uh, people and they were uh, in the conference call they were describing uh, the priorities of NASA as reflected in the new budgets and it was a very interesting and revealing uh, um, conference call um, and um, so I just want to thought I'd try to summarize that quickly at least what I heard from uh, Bolden and Lori Garver both of them about where the NASA budget is going and I don't think it's very well conveyed to the uh, general public what's really going on. Uh, the, the whole dominance of um, NASA is uh, the preparations at every level to go to Mars. The communications infrastructure, the physical infrastructures, everything is being laid out and prepared to go to Mars. Uh, the propulsion systems, you name it. And so the big priority is the My Mars story. The other side of that is that NASA is uh, offloading onto the um, uh, private community in the United States, uh, uh, particularly the notion of um, the developments on the moon and also developments of other kinds of technologies that are um, necessary. So there's a, a big internal shift to take things that aren't at the edge and to move them into a private private domain at the same time as the the real focus of, of all the budget and everything is really two things as I said the Mars mission and the other is, is uh, basically capturing an asteroid and tethering it in uh, lunar orbit so those are the headlines that I thought I'd just get into the group from my, this conversation I had uh, about two weeks ago with uh, the folks in, at NASA headquarters right. is that helpful Yes. Anybody want to respond to some of that? No, nah, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what uh, was what is there discussion about other NASA related programs that have to do with satellite telecom, uh, especially Earth monitor? Oh, oh, oh yeah. I mean, that's and, what I meant by infrastructure. They talked a lot about the investment in the communications infrastructure, the physical infrastructures all of that there it's not going to be a one shot out to mars it's going to be a colonization it's going to, so they're going to move things out on astronaut asteroids onto the moon everything is uh, about making the if you want to think about the safety zones all the way out so that we can get out to mars and also get back so everything is being built in, with that idea of you know the You're actual not booking a one way ticket then Larry. it's not the one way ticket thing so okay. that not for them so that was new to me, that it wasn't just like shooting to the moon. 
it's a, a much more complex of infrastructure that they're laying out uh, in terms of their uh, the NASA's intention. So I thought that was just something that would be good for everybody to hear. When uh, did they uh, did they set a date for uh, a year for uh, the launch of the Mars mission? Well, I hear different dates. I you know I don't know if I can have the I don't have an inside really inside scoop on that, but I think within a decade there that's what their intention is. Mm -hmm. so. Is there a uh, discussion going on about, uh, I, I, again, it's unfortunate that Dimitris, uh, we can't hear Dimitris. Yeah, because, because he's, he and he's I so spoke vertical. on Sunday. Yeah, he and I spoke on Sunday about the, the economics of these various kinds of manufacturing and uh, other, and communications and other uh, aspects of the space program. Um, and um, I, I'm curious about the private uh, sector space initiatives. Um, well, I can talk. A, I can talk a little bit about that very directly from my involvement in Pittsburgh with private uh, robotic company and our our particular moon arts project I involved with them going to the moon in 2015. Please. Um, so um, the what I see, and I've been writing some papers on this for NSS in internal consumption is I've been involved a lot and watched a lot of entrepreneurial investment in in the world around Carnegie Mellon and uh, the problems that I see is that the investment cycle uh, in the United States in particular is very short looking for big-term profits in a hurry and the problems I see in terms of uh, the private development of space um, technologies in particular is going to take a lot of patient capital it's uh, you can't you can't uh, it's not like a dot-com that you can throw them away because you can't fail uh, going out into outer space so you have to really lay down a process that's a much more intense long-term capitalization model and uh, the economics I think of, of the space development we're right at that edge where it, it some smart Action is going to is going to bring a lot in, into um, into uh, into what into the private world if we can figure out a, a a new transference model from you know from research to product and how the economics works in terms of of um, what we call incubators uh, how do you incubate an idea research idea to a product that then a company can really move on. And then how does that company uh, surround itself with a s sufficient capital to sustain a long-term project? And that's the, uh, I think that those are the big problems facing the private industry NASA relationship uh, at this moment. And I've seen that now for about 15 years because I worked in a kind of incubator uh, place at, at CMU and I saw a lot of it up close. And while there's a, a in the media a lot of focus on some of the uh, private sector companies and the issue of space tourism, um, do you think there's um, opportunities for within the private sector companies for uh, collaboration on creative ventures? I think that's where there's an enormous pile of opportunity. It's just how do we how do we uh, garden it, you know, in a in a significant way because uh, there's all kinds of activities going on, you know, micro satellites, you name it. And I think all of those things are, are, are potential opportunities for artists and, and other people, you know, not just arts alone, but uh, all kinds of other thought to, to garner around these new clusters of, of technologies that are being developed for space by private industry. So I think, you know, like, um, you know, the satellite industry, you name it. Uh, Trevor's Trevor Palin's recent work is a kind of example of that. Uh, so I think um, you know, it's really significant things can happen if the channels can be opened up and the thinking is open enough to to invite uh, artists and other people into the thinking process. And I would love to have that up those opportunities open up sooner than later. That you know, the arts don't come on board just to decorate things. You know, but the, so we really. As we come to the uh, sort of closing of this uh, hangout session, 
uh, to uh, hinge on your words, let's introduce some artists that are standing behind you and get yes. a few more I want to, people yeah. to participate. Here's Frank, and here's Andrew Kaiser, so I'll get out of the way here. <laughs> Andrew, say, go, go for say, it. it. All right. Hi again, Frank. Hi. Hi, Andrew. Rob. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hello, Frank. It's, it's been quite an amazing morning right now. The uh, Ishiguro Setsuko is presenting. We just heard from Yvonne Clearwater at ArtSpace. Uh, George Singer just gave us a beautiful presentation. Um, and uh, I, I believe that you're able to watch these presentations simultaneously. Is that true? We haven't been doing that on WebEx. Uh, we have the link that's been sent to us. Uh, and, but I don't think any of us have, have tuned in yet. Excellent. Well, the, the community is well aware of what's going on, and we'll send them the link so that they can all experience your conversation. So the incredible value of, of having these spaces operating and informing one another in, uh, in the post experience of this moment in time is going to be so incredibly valuable. We're elated that this is actually happening and really working, and you guys have done just a, such a fantastic job to make this a reality of ISAW4. So, well, I can't wait. The pods are going to be fascinating in terms of the content that we're going to be able to produce. The, the people here are really uh, ready to uh, bite into some really significant questions and actually come up with some specific outcomes um, that we will hopefully move all of our agendas further. Uh, Rob, I think it's incredible what's happening in Mexico, Central America. We're just elated to hear all of these evolutions. The I know uh, mantra yesterday. I, I didn't hear what happened, but I imagine everything, all the projects were brought up to speed to the whole community, and it's, it's, on, it's, it's codified in this experience. Wait. Oh, is a question. Yeah. Uh, did, did Has our meeting been you lately, Frank? Yes. yes. Great. So hopefully we might see you down there. Yes, and it, I, we're, we're going to take some of this information to Beijing um, right. for I, IAC. I ho are any of you going to be in Beijing in September? Okay. So there, there are Richard, Richard Klar is organizing Sorry. a... Uh, Sorry. Sorry, Richard. <laughs> I'll be there. Oh, yeah, Richard. Yeah. No, I'm chairing the session in Beijing, Space of an Artistic Medium, and I know... Frank is presenting a paper in our session. We look forward to that. So uh, here at the conference today, a Space Wish is going to be discussed as a model. We're using the model of a potential suborbital flight with a flight service provider such as XCOR Aerospace to not only look at the communications issues, uh, we have people here from the small satellites community, and at this point in time, the live interactive webcast capabilities on parabolic flight and on suborbital flight isn't a service that these service providers are able to provide, so we're trying to instigate technical conversations between the engineers so that they can meet these needs so that we have the capacity to do live webcast or spacecast uh, from uh, you know, uh, from these flights. It's always been the intention so that there could be greater interactivity between the work being done in these flights and uh, a larger social media audiences. And um, the other but thing you that... You uh, yeah. is um, somebody from Exco there? Uh, well, the, thanks to Tyler Stallings and Free yeah. Enterprise, uh, Kaki Rodway is actually down um, in San Diego in preparation for ISCDC, which uh, from this Great. event we're taking all the information that we're gathering to present to ISDC just like we did in 2005. We had the workshop here and then we it, it expanded to doing a similar thing in ISDC. And so we're doing the same thing next year in ISDC. Uh, the beauty about uh, the uh, National Space Society and the community there is that they are welcoming us and they want us to actually weave our uh, our language and our, our presentations within the, the, the formal structure of the overall conference rather than creating a separate arts and space track they want us to weave it in and as a symbol of that the Leonardo da Vinci Space Arts uh, Arts and Space Awards uh, will be uh, extended um, and on Saturday night in 2014 in Los Angeles at ISDC as a part of their uh, gala awards dinner so that the artist will be awarded right alongside and in tandem with these space scientists. So we feel this is really great. So Lowry's going to go down as an emissary right from
from ISAW4 to ISDC to strengthen those relationships. Jean-Luc Serre is here to look at the issues of enhancing the, uh, the exhibition components. Uh, there also is another pod that's going to be talking about the, um, uh, 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 the economics, the bibliographies. I, you're all aware of the pods from the information that we send out. So that's, that's really what's going to happen for the rest of the day. Tomorrow, Pete Warden, the NASA Ames Center director, is going to be here. Um, that's about all I have to say. I'm just so glad to see all of you, and I'm grateful just to participate in this experience with everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to stick my head in. I've been, I'm Andrew Kaiser, um, a composer and sort of a space artist working with sound. Um, and I know I've been in the other room through the morning listening to the presentations. Everything Frank said about the energy that's in the room here uh, this year is true. Uh, and I wanted to see some faces here uh, that I've heard names. Daniela, you and I have exchanged some emails. I'm looking forward to continuing that and seeing if we can collaborate on some stuff in the next few months or year or so. But I wanted to also introduce myself. I've, uh, this is my first Space Wars World. Well, it's not quite true. It's my first Space Wars workshop in America. But tell them a little bit about your work. Well, I presented a piece yesterday uh, called Moon Icon. Um, it's a sonification of, the, of an image of the surface of the moon. Uh, so using a process of uh, fast Fourier transform, which allows you to analyze sound in a visual capacity, take that and reverse engineer the gesture of sound from an existing image, in this case one of the surface of the moon. Um, I talked a little bit about that yesterday, sort of as an introduction to the larger project that Lowry may have mentioned, but the Luna Lyre project is one of the moon arts pieces that we're doing at the studio at, at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and that's a whole series of projects, all starting with uh, sound, or with a sonic understanding of data, turning those into a connected series of pieces around the moon. Um, so I talked a bit about that yesterday. Um, I talked some about those future projects. Thank you. Daniela, you want to bring us all back together? Um, well, uh, I would say maybe we can wrap up the Hangout. Um, unless uh, there are some uh, other thoughts um, that people want to share. Is it possible to make one more comment? Yes, please, Richard. Okay. I just wanted to comment on some of the things that Lowry was saying uh, at the end there about uh, including artists in these upcoming programs. And it's probably not a well-known fact, but in uh, 2006, the International Academy of Astronautics, we organized uh, a study group called uh, Space Architecture Tools for Development for the 21st Century. And there were four modules in this study group, uh, si simulators, human factors, art, and education. And uh, I headed up the art module along with Al Wunderlich from Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, believe it or not, it took six years to complete this. The wheels of progress turned very slowly at the academy. but the final process, which was the approval by the Board of Trustees of the Academy, happened just this past October. We're now waiting for the Academy to put the final report online so it's available to everyone. But as far as the art module goes, there were four recommendations, and they're pretty important recommendations. But um, the main one is the Academy recommends integrating artists into the human space project teams from the earliest phases of the project life cycle. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that uh, the Academy recommends establishing a paradigm for art utilized in human space projects that focus on art as a core factor, enabling mission success rather than as an aesthetic uh, afterthought. And so, you know, to have this document is something that people can point to, and it's not just a, a wish or a dream. And so if somebody needs to cite this, that this is a, an official document that's produced by the International Academy of Astronautics that makes these recommendations. And I think it's an important step. And 
hopefully uh, it'll lend some credence in what we're all trying to do as far as integrating art into the um, international space programs. Any more comments? I'm afraid I'm going to have to say goodbye. I'm going to run out the door. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks, Rob. Um, and uh, thanks to yeah. everybody who participated uh, from all over the places. Um, we are uh, going to organize uh, Richard Lowenberg and myself another Hangout in June that will bring together the, some of the participants from this uh, two days event and from the conference and we are uh, hoping to continue discussing the uh, most important topics that uh, arise during the conference. Richard, would you like to also uh, wrap up, uh, add a few final considerations to the Hangout? Well, I think this has been a, a wonderful uh, two-day, uh, both an experiment and a, and a nice uh, tele-exchange among some uh, remarkable people we've been able to, uh, who, who've agreed to come together uh, on short notice for this. Um, and as Daniela said, we're, we're going to do some follow-up hangouts on these topics. Um, so, um, to those at the conference, uh, I wish you a successful program uh, through tomorrow yet, and um, we uh, this will be posted on YouTube. Daniela will send out the link immediately after, and um, uh, as we uh, uh, close this out, I, I just want to, a uh, little bit of business, uh, say to Demetrius, maybe we can stay on or log back on and see if we can fix the audio problem you're having, Dimitri, so you and I can do a little economic discussion about space still for a few minutes afterwards. Daniela, how do we do that? Uh, do we log off and then come back on? Will that yes, be the best I will uh, I will say let's uh, close this hangout uh, and we can discuss all the technicalities uh, on Skype and start a new one uh, shortly after we close this. Okay, and these will all be posted. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thanks.